Hi, it's Mr. Rowe. Today I'm going to show you something that I made specifically to do a project I'm working on for a special client. This uh, idea has been tossing around in my head for quite a few years actually, but I just decided I'm going to make it so I can use it on this project. Why not? And as I was making it, I realized how versatile it can be, and I came up with several other uses I could use it for, and I should have made it years ago. How about a diamond wheel? And sharpen your saw blades. Before we go any further, there's one thing that you absolutely have to remember whenever you're using a zip cut or a grinder. Never aim the spin of the wheel at your face or nuts. So I want you to think about all the reasons why we use a zip cut wheel in an angle grinder. And I'm saying zip cut, that's a brand name, but an abrasive cutting disc. So like thin channels like these that I make, to do nice little miter cuts, you have to use a zip cut. And what about all the other reasons? There's like small threaded rod, key stock, piano hinge, um, hardened shafts, um, really thin tubing. So what I've always ended up doing for years is you clamp the piece of material in a vise and then use a zip cut by hand and try and follow the line by eye. Well, I want to make a tool that will do accurate miters nice and clean repeatedly. First, a quick little explanation of the project I'm working on. So what I'm making is a, a large kitchen light. It's a trough light. I've made one of these before, the same size. This is going to be glass on, on all sides. So I'm making the metal framework and I'm just using this as a jig. Here's the one I made a few years ago. Uh, the one I'm making now will be similar to it. And here it is installed and all lit up. So pretty. Careful, don't hurt yourself. So what I picked up is this old beaver table saw. Made in Canada, Guelph, Ontario. Look at that. So this is a heavy cast piece of steel. Very well built. But the thing I like about these is they have, for what I'm going to do, they have a nice small little top. So it's not too big. It didn't have a motor, so it was nice and cheap. Only 30 bucks. So this guy is going to get mounted inside Everything inside of this table saw is steel or cast steel, so we don't have to worry about anything melting like on a modern day table saw. But, but, but Mr. Rowe, why don't you just put a motor on it and you'd already be finished? Well, a uh, regular motor doesn't have fast enough RPM to drive an abrasive cut disc. So I did do a test to try out the original drive mechanism because I wanted to keep the raise and lower and the tilt from the original table saw. So I put a 7 inch grinder on it but everything just vibrated like crazy. is way too fast for the original uh, belt drive and I would spend way too much time um, modifying everything to work properly. And the important thing to me was the tilt function. I would have spent a lot more time uh, making it raise and lower as well and uh, this client can be kind of pushy sometimes so I need to get this light done. His wife is nice. Okay, so I have the table saw, the whole carriage insides removed and I have it clamped to the table upside down. I'm going to use, it also has the handle holes, let's figure out what thread those are. And I'm thinking I'm going to mount it vertically, like this. So the blade sticks out like that. And there's just enough room. I need to make up a couple brackets. And I also have another idea of what I can use the old uh, use that piece for.
I already decided uh, when I bought the table saw that I wasn't going to wreck it in any way. So everything I'm making is bolting in to the same holes that the old carriage was in. And um, now that I've used it quite a bit, um, I'm just going to sell the old carriage to someone who's restoring an old table saw. Okay, so a little update. Got these brackets made up that thread into where the handle normally goes. They ended up being just uh, a regular 3 8 bolt. 3 8 16. And I threaded them in the way the handle locks on. I don't know if you can see, but the end of the bolt is to lock against the casting of the grinder. So I did that, and then I'm using this uh, nut to actually tighten it onto the bracket. So clear. And then these angle irons, I have one on each side. They picked up the holes that used to be for the carriage. I wanted to go all the way across and distribute the force so I don't crack this casting. These punched holes are oversized, so I could do uh, a little tweaking to make sure the blade is aligned. And I made sure um, just a little over seven inches. So a seven inch blade will fit between the angle irons. And I had to remove a little bit of material of the old casting right here, just on the bottom, there was a lip there. So hopefully I didn't weaken it too much. But you said you weren't gonna wreck it. Are you sure that base is on the right way? The reason why I had to notch out a little bit of the casting on the bottom of the tabletop is to allow for the blade pivot and I sacrificed a little bit of blade height to do that. I went to the magic cupboard and found this old U-bolt and I had a length of uh, 5 8 threaded rod and these uh, little shaft stops. Okay, so I have that uh, plate welded on there to the U-bolt. Everything's attached. And um, yeah, it's working pretty good. Well, unfortunately, I didn't capture the moment when I realized I had the base on backwards and had to take everything apart and flip it all around. But uh, it all still worked. And I measured, I'm with the seven inch blade on, it can do about 48 degrees the one way. And I found the lock actually holds it at 90, no problem. And it actually can tilt about 10 degrees past 90. Everything on my, uh, my normal table saw doesn't fit in here. It sits up too high. So these are one eighth flat bar. I drilled and tapped the hole here. To make uh, I'm going to tack those so they can't spin out Same in this one and I'm going to use a piece of unistrut because I love unistrut so that way I can lock this using these stacking nuts I have to put a washer on there too and I'll be able to lock that in on any angle I want clamp use the uh, unistrut nuts in here so I could make a taller fence um, bolt anything I want to it in the middle as well maybe for clamping whatever I made up this uh, piece of rectangular tubing I welded on more unistrut on the back so it has adjustment as well it can go side to side back to back a little bit I love unistrut I'm going to add a nice straight piece of plywood um, to the sled so no matter what angle I have this at it'll the uh, the blade will cut easily into the wood instead of cutting into the steel and all of this is about safety so I can clamp any piece of material um, so there's no binding on the blade and I'm loving the pulling the material into the blade I can see exactly where the line is, where I'm doing the cut. The blade is spinning away from me. I have an idea for a guard 
that I haven't quite made yet. But um, let's try out some more pieces. So as I'm testing everything out here, I'm going a little bit slow. I'll have to admit, I was a little bit nervous. I wasn't sure exactly what was going to happen. But so far, I've never had any really scary moments. The key is having the, the sled having contact on both sides. So there's nothing hanging out, so you can't bind on the blade. And I've actually noticed the blades are lasting quite a long time because I, I think it's just cutting straighter. That's a little itty bitty key stock there. And this is actually some of the channel that I'll be using on the light. I'll definitely be doing more videos on um, all the accessories I'm going to make for this thing. So I have a little bit of an unorthodox idea of how I want to have uh, the guard more of a shield. I had this piece of Lexan, it's actually left over, it was a divider inside of a big fish tank that I made forever ago. That's why it has so many holes in it for the water to flow through. Anyway, I actually really liked all the different holes so I can move it around, place it in different spots. I tried it on the table saw, on the uh, slide. Um, but I have an idea for another video I'll show you what I'm gonna do and I have it tilted out of the way here just so the camera can see what's going on oh, that is so, nice. so leave your ideas in the comments um, I'm kind of open to how I could have some guarding. I would actually say that this is safer than if I had to put that angle in a vise and zip cut off on that line like I normally would have by hand. So it's probably t hard to tell here, but this is the top cap of the light I have tacked together and inside is a channel. And normally this is something I would have done by hand with the zip cut on an angle grinder but um, nice straight cut all the way across no problem so this video is getting pretty long I'm gonna uh, have a follow-up video where I show how I did the miters for the bottom of the light I'm gonna use the uh, tilt 45 uh, mechanism for that and um, I'll show you what the light looks like after it's installed um, I think there's many things I could make for this. Like um, I, I need a fixed 90 degree sled and then a right and a left um, fixed 45 degree sled. So you can just throw it on top and then I would use this one for doing compound angles. So normally I would put a piece of angle like this in my horizontal bandsaw but uh, I realize not everybody has one. So I just wanted to show what its possibilities are. This is a two inch piece of angle and it cuts it just as easy as a abrasive chop saw. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my follow-up video. Uh, thanks for watching and remember it's not stupid if it works.